Hello again, welcome. This is Abbott Time for Clocks. Another episode in the amateur clock repair and reveal and everyone's welcome. Alright, a lot of people have seen of one shape or size or type or another black mantle clocks and they are probably the most common antique clock you will find on any auction site. You go to flea markets, almost anywhere you go, the black mantle clock is the the most, the most populous that you will see. And they made millions of them. How do I know millions? The current clock that I'm working on, it's an Ingram clock. And so when I work on a clock, I try to read up on the history of the clock and the company and so forth. So I was reading and the black the history of black mantle clocks is interesting. And unless you have some of the resources, you may not even know where they come from or why they are black. So I'm going to tell you why. Essentially the black mantle clocks made in such huge numbers from about 1881 to 1930. That's the general time frame. They made them for a long time. And just the one company, Ingram, they had a model of uh, black mantle clock. It was a uh, black enameled wood case the model was Adrian they made that one model what was it I think I think they they made it for 27 years the same model they had three different variations in the case but essentially that model called Adrian they it was popular and they produced it for a long time and one customer American Tobacco Company claimed to have distributed whether to their sellers or salesmen or however they did it American Tobacco claimed to have distributed alone 300,000 Adrian clocks made by Ingram that was just one clock just one of the black the models of black metal and that was just one company of one clock so these clocks are out there in huge numbers or they used to be because every year you have floods, fires, earthquake, all kind of things happen and clocks take a beating and a lot of them end up in the landfill for one reason or another. But just the same, because there were so many of them, of them they pop up all the time. Attics, barns, basements, boxes that people forgot about like this <laughs> a little embarrassed like this Ingram clock here and one of the one of the by the way one of the quick ways this is unrestored of course but you see this slot here in the dial that was for that has a wheel that you could turn back and forth to adjust for slow or fast and as far as I know Ingram's the only one that had this in the dial I'm not sure I'm a fan of having a dial interrupted with that slot and people tempted to rub their finger on the dial when they go to adjust it but that's one way you can identify old Ingram clocks is by that slot but I, <clears throat> in my cleaning this was in my drawer down here and uh, I'd forgotten about it but uh, so that so that's what made me look even more about the old antique black mantle clocks. So anyhow, for all you amateurs out there who probably have some of these clocks, and I know some of the videos on YouTube, one fellow, he has only Seth Thomas black mantle clocks, and he had one, two, five or six shelves, all restored, all running, all looking fabulous, real nice, nice and I mean, nice and restored, unlike this one. But people have these. You'll see all kind of videos on them. 
That being said, many don't know the history. Why are they black? French clocks, French slate marble clocks, were being brought to the United States in the late 1800s. Well made, quality, beautiful polish to them, beautiful uh, embellishments, columns, caps, whatever, <clears throat> style. Quality movement, but also hefty price. The French, the French um, mantel clocks that came in, they were, they average from between twenty and forty dollars for a clock. Now, back in the time, like say eighteen ninety, an employee of the Ingram Clock Factory, the average salary is forty dollars a month. That's what they got paid. So to pay, so to buy a clock, a f nice French clock would cost an entire month's salary. Most people could not afford that. They had to eat, they had to pay the daily bills and so forth. So, American clocks, Amer American clockmakers, they started coming up with methods to imitate the black high quality French clocks. And so the black enameled coating that you'll find on wood case clocks and iron case clocks that's why they did it. And a lot of those enameled cases, I mean, when they're all shined up with the uh, hardware, some, some of it was gilded and so forth, they look real nice. And here's the price difference. Not 20 to $40. A, um, a, black, like, a black mantle clock like this one, about $7.50. So, so quite a difference from forty dollars and more affordable for people and some of the iron cased black enameled clocks they cost a little more maybe between seven and fourteen dollars different companies price them differently but the bottom line is that now mo most people could have a clock like this in their home it was affordable and attainable the French clocks pretty much still resided in the purview of the wealthy, the more well-to-do, <clears throat> and they're still great clocks. And a lot of people, they, they love the French clocks. They actually look down on American clocks, but everyone has their favorite type of clock and so forth. The different styles that the Americans came up, came up with to be more cost-efficient and so forth. I think they're fabulous. I look at the history of them. Now some of the names that they give clocks is just like they pull them out of a hat with no rhyme or reason to it. But all the same, it's just really in really interesting to me because I love clocks. That's why I'm getting so excited talking about it. I want to mention a couple things about black mantle clocks. All of the ornamentation that you find on these clocks that's what they are they're ornaments some some of the clocks they'll have like they I'm sure you've seen them they have like handles on the side they look like door knockers kind of that those are for ornamentation only don't grab a clock by those and pick it up generally they're just held on with little nails on the side. They're not for picking up the clock. If you want to, in fact, here's a tip. Is that even in view? If you pick up a clock generally from the bottom, from the back and the front and the bottom, or from the side is fine. But if you have anything on the side, don't grab it and pick it up. That's bound to, to be trouble. Because some, cause now the iron case clocks they can weigh up to 20 and 30 pounds. Many times uh, they're screwed on, but sometimes those aren't held on very good either. So just make it a practice to pick up from below. And some have here. Let me put a let me put a flat top up here. Here's an example of a mantel clock with a pretty much flat top. 
sometimes people will, if they want to move the clock, they'll grab it by the top and they'll move it and set it where they want to. Not a good idea. Tops can detach. And when they detach, the rest of the clock comes tumbling down. And these, uh, if your clock has columns, this clock is also unre un unrestored. And I'm supporting it from the bottom. But the columns, those are not handles. Don't grab the clock by the columns and try to lift it. Bad idea. Bad. And also, the feet on your black mantle clocks, make sure these are tight. If these are loose and wobbly, every time you set the clock down and pick it up, the foot is going to go back and forth and eventually it'll strip out the nail or screw hole on the bottom and that is not good. So just make sure the feet are snugged up and if you don't know how to snug them up take the pendulum out and lay the clock on its back and then you can tighten up the feet because uh, like this one see this? That's what I'm talking about so you just want to make sure that your clock, uh, all the feet, are nice and secure. And, and these feet are also just cast material. And if you have a heavy clock and you set it down too hard, they can snap. In fact, I have several with, with the, the foot. It just it bends or breaks because somebody set it down too hard. Just a couple of little tips to... Uh, make your clocks happier you know I saw I saw one video and the fellow was advising people not to buy these black mantle clocks for investment purposes and he, he could be right to some degree and the reason he said that is because as soon as you go to have them repaired it'll cost you more than what the clock is worth already so in his opinion it was bad in, a bad investment but if you like clocks the way I do, you like the look of the look of a clock, you like the challenge to see what's inside, get it running again, get it looking good. You can't really put a price on that. Also, just a little bit about these cases. Uh, the the reason they're black is meant, like I said, to imitate the black French slate marble clocks and how they how they did it or how they used to do it was they would they would have the case minus any ornamentation or anything just the bare case and they would dip it in the enamel solution they called it japanning and then when they brought it out they would bake the finish on with pretty high heat they would they would bake it and sometimes they would dip it again and they would bake it again but the problem, and I found this out reading about Elias Ingram, is because he applied for a patent in the what they call the Japanning process. He said when they made it like that, dipping the whole thing and baking it, that the heat compromised the glue. And many times when the clocks were being shipped to wherever they were going, the customer, the reseller, they would come apart in the case because the glue from the heat would fail. So Elias Ingram, he came up with a method where you would take like an entire front piece here, because this is mitered and glued together. You would take the entire piece, however long, and they would immerse the whole thing in the solution and they would bake it. And then when it was finished, then they would cut the pieces, glue them together. So they weren't baking the entire case or dipping the entire case anymore. They were just doing each individual piece, cutting and then gluing and assembling the whole thing. And then they would put the all the ornamentation on the clock. And that's that's how they made the black enameled uh, wood case clocks. Uh, I, the metal case clocks, I imagine that they dipped and uh, baked those I'm, I haven't read very much about those, but different, different manufacturers called it different things. 
Ingram called it japanned finish. I think Ansonia called it ebonized, just a different term. So, uh, so I thought so I thought that was real interesting. So just just take care of your ornaments here. Now the the French mantel clocks they were so beautiful with their ornamentation and design and so forth that it was hard for American manufacturers to duplicate that. So what they did was they made little what they called statuettes. Today we call them clock toppers. And so when you see a black mantel clock with a flat top, that was meant to accommodate what they call a topper. See that, and the and the and the topper that what we call the clock topper, it just goes on top of the clock like that. See this one? I picked. This is the only. This is the only clock topper that I have. It's a it's a deer. It's, it feels like it's solid brass, and they were made of different uh, cast materials. Some were inferior, more inferior materials, and then. Uh, painted but this one I got it cheap because the legs were welded it was in pretty bad it's in pretty bad shape I started cleaning it up and also the horn the antler <clears throat> it was broken and somebody welded it so this I mean in great condition these toppers they're not cheap they're not cheap they um uh, in fact, I got excited when I, I like to watch some of the uh, thrifting videos, and one's called the Old Curiosity Shop. And Scott, the owner, he uh, he, make, he makes the videos there, and he sells the things that he buys on eBay, most of them. But anyhow, he went to an antique store in one of his videos, and I saw they had some they had some toppers. And he picked it up and looked at it and said, oh, I've never seen uh, the way the uh, ground looked. It was a real, real nice shape. Clock toppers sell between, usually between $60 and $200, depending on the design, what they're made of, and so forth. There, if you Sometimes people will sell the clocks with the topper. That's a good deal there. Because if you pay a hundred dollars for a clock and the topper comes with it, if you are a reseller, you just doubled your money. So, uh, if you do have a topper, make sure you have felt on the bottom before you put it on top of your clock, so you don't scratch your case. But uh, so anyhow, I was excited when I saw him pick up those toppers. He knew what they were. I'm surprised he didn't buy them because those are good return on investment but it all depends on the market as well but they also did call them statuettes so the, like this clock here it might not be a um, it might not be a high dollar clock but when everything's shined up and looking good and you put your topper on the top to me that's just as good as any high dollar French clock and I'm sure people will some will disagree but that's fine okay that's basically all I wanted to talk about in this episode and I know people like to see and hear about clocks and their history and so forth so I just tried to come up with something that was informative and interesting to me so hopefully I'll get, I, and, I, and I hope it was. All right, I hope everyone stays safe and take care of yourself and your families, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.